Hi everyone, welcome to the Trend Profits weekly market update. This is for the week ending March 22nd, 2024. So as always in these videos, the goal is to first talk a little bit about what drove market performance last week, what we can see in the week ahead, and then go through some trend profit strategies or just some of the things that happened with the trend profit strategy over the past week that uh, I'd like everyone to be aware of, all with the goal here of just getting everyone comfortable with the trend profit signals and just to give you a little bit more transparency as to why you're getting a lot of the alerts. So that's what I want to accomplish in this one. And as always, trying to keep this to five to eight minutes. So I'm going to jump right into the Federal Reserve meeting that we saw last week. This was the primary driver for what happened in the markets. Now, essentially what happened here is they, as expected, they did not lower rates uh, this meeting. No one really expected them to, as we saw last week by using the Fed Watch tool where we saw the implied probabilities of different rate cuts. Uh, based on what the options markets and the futures markets were pricing in. So there are two major announcements or the two major things that came out of this Fed meeting were that one is that they really uh, upped their estimate for their GDP estimate for 2024. So at the last meeting, we call it the live meeting where they do projections, where they actually do a lot more of the in-depth analysis. They were projecting a 1.4% annualized growth rate for the US GDP. They just increased it to 2.1. So that is a significant upgrade. It really underlies the strength of the US economy. And you know, given the strong economy, given that we are seeing inflation moderating and we are seeing unemployment staying at very low levels, this kind of is like this Goldilocks environment that we're in. It seems that way, right? We're still not 100% sure of anything. But this was one of the major points that came out of it. The other thing is, and this is really what the market reacted to. So the Federal Reserve, with all of the voting members on the Federal Reserve, they come up with something called the dot plot. And this is normally something that looks like this, where each dot represents a member, and this is them telling you where they think the terminal rate will be for interest rates at the end of the year. So it's a little bit more complicated seeing it this way. We can look at it like this. It's pretty much the same way. So we are currently sitting at the 5.375. It's the midpoint of the range. So there are two members who expect no rate cuts this year. They're saying there shouldn't be rate cuts. Down here where the nine is, you have nine voting members saying 4.625, meaning it should be in the 4.5 to the 4.75 range. So this implies three rate cuts. And as we can see here, the majority being five and nine, this means we are expecting two to three rate cuts this year. And the market was so happy with this. This is what they wanted to hear. It was a very dovish meeting. They fully expect it. They're very happy with the growth. But of course, they're saying it's data dependent. And should any negative inflation ratings or something negative occur, you know, all of this can change. But this is really what drove the markets uh, this week. It's interesting if you want to see any of this, by the way, you can go online to the Federal Reserve's website and you can just Google FOM calendars. If you Google FOM calendars, which is this part of the URL up here, you will get to this where I'll show you all of their meeting lists and you could click on the statement, the press conference, or what really what you want to see is the, is the implement, uh, excuse me, it is the, the PDF here. So when you click on the projection materials, I apologize, it's over here, projection materials. When you click on this, this is where you can start seeing everything. This is where all of their projections, all of their data is, and, and it's, it's really great. So for those of you who, who love looking at numbers, uh, you'll love it. So, and I just wanted to show you this quickly because if you look at the dot plot or what the voting was for, this is for March, sorry, I wanted to show you December of last year. So if I look at December of last year, we can see that the dot plot was still considerably, they were projecting many more rate cuts. In this case, it was closer to like four to five. So because of this change, and I think it was a little bit more dovish than the market was expecting, the markets went up. 
So how much did they go up by? I'll just move over to the presentation over here, the slides. So last week we can see that you know the big winner was definitely technology. NASDAQ was up over 3% as a lot of the big tech names and NVIDIA recovered. Uh, the Dow still posted a very solid week up 2%. So you know we're sitting on some pretty pretty decent gains for the year, which is which is pretty amazing. So, you know, a lot of them are still very close to their all-time highs. You know, Bitcoin has pulled back quite a bit over the past week or so. I don't think anyone should be surprised given how much it went up by. But we are still sitting in a pretty solid market right now. So then the question would then become, and I'll just move over to here, if, if the markets are so doing so well, why did we see a sell signal? on QQQ last week. So this is what I want to talk about now with trend profits is just to give you a little bit more color and understanding behind why you will see some of these signals. So one of the major elements that we use here for trend profits is we use volatility. It's we use AI to identify the volatility state of each ETF. They can be in a high state or a low state. In this case, the high volatility state in blue, you can see that a lot, especially the downturns here, they typically occur in the high volatility state. So the trading rules change based on the volatility state. When we're in a high volatility state, the algorithm, we give it all the flexibility to do as much trading as it, as it needs to, to protect you because the probability of seeing downturns when the volatility state goes high is a lot higher. When you're in the smooth sailing, it says the black dots, the one, the trading rules are much tighter. We don't want to trade too often. So I'm going to make this into a little bit more of a more recent picture of that one. And now I'm connecting all the dots with the line, but it's the same thing. Blue is high volatility, black is low volatility. And this is just 2024. And what I wanted to point out here is that it just changed to a blue. So we just went into a high volatility regime. Notice that the slope here has started to moderate. So the algorithm is saying right now that it is pretty much just started a downtrend. It might last, it might not. We don't know. We'll have to see as the next couple of days unfolds. But what I wanted to show you, why is NASDAQ before with the trend profit system performing the way it is this year? is because we've been stuck in two different trading ranges. So we saw one trading range, let's call it from the end of January to mid-February. And we saw some pretty violent reversals, even if it's just 2% here and there, because when you're doing the triple leverage, that could be 6%. But you can see there've been very sudden changes of volatility state this year. So when we're in this kind of trading range with sharp volatility changes, the algorithm will try and protect you. And it may be trading a little bit more than we would like, but this is what it's designed to do. It's designed to protect when the probabilities of, of potential losses increase. Then we went into a second one, which we are currently in, where we've been in this trading range for about a month now, again with some pretty short and sharp reversals of volatility. So when this happens, yeah, we're gonna be trading a little bit more frequently and they could also be occurring at less than you know the best times. So this is what explains NASDAQ right now. I really hope that provides information to everyone. And of course, look, if you have any more questions, please reach out. I'll be more than happy to answer anything. The, the other thing I wanted to show is with semiconductors because I did receive a couple of emails from subscribers about what's going on with the semiconductors, why we missed out on the rebound last week. Well, they're still in a high volatility state. And we can see from here that they actually have, the trend has clearly changed with the semiconductors. Yes, it has bounced back a little bit, but at the moment, the algorithm is still saying, the system is still telling you, we are in a downtrend right now. So let's see how it plays out, and we're still in the high volatility state. So this is why we've been out, this is why we've been kept out of the semiconductors for the past few days. So again, I don't really want to reinforce short-term thinking. This is about long-term discipline, patience. The results are there. And I know everyone that's been with us for four to six months or longer has seen these long-term results. If you're a new subscriber, you know, it's like the message here is four to six months, you will get so comfortable with the system, you will get hooked. 
So again, I'm trying to keep people away from the short-term thinking, but I still want to give you so much transparency and let you see everything that's going on here. So I'm going to leave it at that for today because I've been talking for too long already. So again, uh, you can scan the QR code if you need the contact information. If you're watching this and you're not currently a subscriber, we'd love to have you join the community. So thank you very much, everyone, and uh, we'll talk again next week.